Hello friends, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'll teach you how to loop through model items in ESP.NET Core Razor Pages. In this video, I am using Northwind database. All the details regarding Northwind database are available in the video link available on the right hand side. So let's start. First, I will install the entity framework package. Hence, I am opening NuGet Package Manager console. Here, I will paste the command for installing the package. As you can see, the package has been installed. Now, let's move to the Solution Explorer. Now, I am adding a model class to the project. I am naming the class as customer.cs. Now I will click on add. Here I will be creating some properties. You need to make sure that the name of the properties should match the names of the fields in the table for example this particular field customer id is a string field in the database table and the name is exact copy of the column name the second column is contact name you need to make sure that the data type as well as the name of the column is exact match in order to entity framework to map it to the table and fetch the data now we will add another class it will be called as database context. This is more like a business class. It will have all the functions required by entity framework. So here we'll begin with addition of namespaces. So the very first namespace Microsoft dot entity framework core. The next namespace is model class since we need to use the model class in this particular class. Now here I'll inherit the Entity Framework Core Database Context Class or DB Context Class so that I can use all the properties and functions here. Now I am making a constructor of the class. And I am injecting the DB Context Options object using dependency injection. Whatever I am doing is a standard and you will have to do in all the projects where you are using Entity Framework with .NET Core in HP.NET Web Forms and HP.NET MVC. All the classes and functions of Entity Framework Core were automatically generated but in HP.NET Core we have to write it ourselves. Now I am creating a public property of dbset collection. This particular collection will be of model class. And this particular collection will hold the data which is fetched from database using entity framework. Now we are done with the db context class. Before moving ahead, I would like to inform you that an article has already been posted on this topic. The link for the article and the link for the code sample is available in the description. Also, if you need any further help, please feel free to ask on forums. The link for the forum is also available in the description. Finally, I would like to request you to please subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon. Now I'll be opening the app settings.json class. Here I'll be adding the connection string to the Notwin database. Here I am adding a new key mycon and this particular connection key will be used in the startup.cs class later on to fetch the connection string from the app setting.json file. Now here I am adding a connection string which is specific to my machine and database. In your project you need to add the connection string as per your configuration of the database. So that's it we are done with the connection string. Now again let's move to the solution explorer. Now I will be opening the startup.cs class. Here we'll be adding some settings in order to connect to the database. The very first thing I'll do is adding the namespace for Microsoft dot entity framework core. 
Now I'll create a public property of type I configuration interface. Now inside the constructor of the startup class, I'll be initializing this particular property with the object of the configuration class, which is injected using dependency injection. Now inside the constructor, I'll be initializing the configuration property, which I had created earlier. Now here I'll be calling the add MVC function as we are using MVC architecture in this particular project. The next thing I'm doing is creating a variable to store the connection string, which will be fetched from the app settings.json. In order to fetch the connection string, I'm making use of the configuration property. The method to fetch the connection string is get connection string to which I am passing the key. Now we'll make use of the add db context function. And this particular function is used to specify the database that you are using SQL server or something else and also which connection string you are using to connect to the database. So as you can see, I am making use of Lambda expression and I am calling the function use SQL server to which I am passing the connection string variable. So this completes the configuration part. Now I am opening the index model class. Now I am making a property of database context class. Now I am creating a constructor of index model class to which I am passing the database context class object. And with the help of dependency injection, I will be initializing this private property which I had created earlier. Now I am creating a public property of customers collection and this particular property will be used in the razor page for populating the HTML table or in other words our grid. Finally I am creating a on get method which will be called when the razor page is called in the browser and inside this on get method I will be populating the property with the data from the database. Now here I am making use of a link query and I am fetching the top 10 records with the help of take function and those top 10 records I am assigning to the list collection property which I had created earlier. The same can be done directly also but I am making use of link query so that later on you can add where conditions in order to conditionally decide which records you want to display in the grid. Since the result from the link query cannot be directly assigned to the generic list collection, I am making use of two list function in order to convert it to a generic list. And that's it in the index model page and now we are moving to the reserve page. The very first thing is to inherit the model class namespace. Now here I have created a heading as customers as we will be displaying the data for customers. Now here I am creating an HTML table and in this HTML table the table rows will be generated from database using a for each loop. Now here I am creating header elements that is the th element 
and I'll be creating four TH elements for displaying four fields, customer ID, contact name, city and country. Now I'm writing a for each loop which will be executed over the customer's collection. Now inside the for each loop, I'll be adding a table row. And the table row will contain four fields or four cells. Each cell will display the data from a property. So the very first cell will display the property customer ID and the second cell will display the property contact name and same way city and country. Now you can see the data from the database has been successfully fetched using Entity Framework. So with this we come to the end of this video. Today we learnt how to use Entity Framework in ASP.NET Core Razor Pages. Thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe and don't forget to click the bell icon. Goodbye.